Let's compare the M1 Ultra and the M1 Max version of the Mac Studio. What is up everybody and welcome to Apple Insider. It is Andrew here and you can find me on Twitter at Andrew underscore LSU. If you haven't done so already, please go ahead and subscribe and enable those notifications so you don't miss any of my videos. Now today, I got my hands on two versions of the new Mac Studio. I have the M1 Max version as well as the M1 Ultra version. So in this video, I'm gonna first walk you through what are the differences between these two versions of the machine and then I'll give you some benchmarks. The Mac Studio with the M1 Max processor starts off at $19.99, 2,000 bucks. And the Mac Studio with the M1 Ultra Silicon on the inside carries a price tag of $39.99 starting out, or $4,000. So what do you get for that price difference other than the different processor that's on the inside? Well, quite a few things, though they might be smaller and lower down on your list in terms of importance. So let's go through them. Starting off, these two machines have different base specs. For example, the Mac Studio with the M1 Max processor starts off with only 512 gigabytes of SSD storage, whereas the Mac Studio with the M1 Ultra starts off at a cool one terabyte. On top of that, the Mac Studio with the M1X starts with the 32 gigs of memory, whereas the one configured with the M1 Ultra starts off with 64. Going along with that memory, you can configure the M1 Max version with a maximum of 64 gigs, while the M1 Ultra version can be configured all the way up to 128. You need to remember that the M1 Ultra is essentially two M1 Max SoCs fused together. And because of that, you get double of many of those components. For example, you have double the CPU power, double the GPU power, and you have double the other effects of that chip, including twice the size neural engine, a 32 core neural engine, and you have double the video encode and decode engines that you have on the M1 Max. There is one hardware change that I think it's also important to mention. On the front of the Mac Studio with the M1 Ultra, you have two additional Thunderbolt 4 ports. The Mac Studio with the M1 Max SoC on the inside has two USB-C ports there on the front. So you do get additional Thunderbolt 4 ports when you go with the Ultra because it's able to handle more of them than the M1 Max. With all of the specs and differences out of the way, let's go ahead and turn to some performance benchmarks. In my testing, I used two base machines, a base M1 Max and a base M1 Ultra Max Studio. I ran through eight benchmarks, including multiple video export tests inside of Final Cut Pro. We're gonna start off with speedometer, speedometer, whatever you wanna call it, but this is a browser benchmark that tests the responsiveness of web applications. In my testing, I got 293 runs per minute on the M1 Max and a very similar 292 run per minute on that M1 Ultra. Really no difference between these two chips in terms of this web app performance. In Geekbench 5 for the single core score, we expected these to be pretty much the same and that's what we got. A 1798 for the M1 Max and a 1786 on that Ultra, just within the margin of error. For the Geekbench 5 multi-core though, we saw that big difference between the 10 and 20 core CPUs. We got a 12822 on the M1 Max and a 23778 on the M1 Ultra. For Cinebench, which also is testing that CPU, we got a 1535 and a 1535 on the single core. And for the multi-core, again, basically double a 12389 and a 24210 on that Cinebench multi-core test. Moving to Affinity Photo, this is another benchmark that measures vector performance for the CPU and raster performance for both the CPU and GPU. Mainly we're looking at the multi-core or the combined totals for the GPU as well as the CPU. So in the CPU combined test, we got a 947 score for the M1 Max and about a double 1879 for the M1 Ultra. You can see how it's basically double the performance of that M1 Max. And if we look at the Affinity Photo combined multi-score total for the GPU, we're getting a 22,537 and a 33,668. That's the difference between those two internal GPUs. In this case, we're going from a 24-core for the M1 Max and a 48-core for the M1 Ultra. 
Continuing to look at the graphics, we have the Geekbench Compute Graphics under Metal, which is getting us a 60,629 for that M1 Max, compared to a 91,938 for the M1 Ultra. It's neat that we saw a very similar gain, the same percentage on that Affinity GPU test as well as the Geekbench Graphics GPU test. If we continue looking at graphics with the Unigen Heaven benchmark, this is an older application and it does run under Rosetta, so it isn't native to the machine, but it still gives you an idea when running under Rosetta, how much better the M1 Ultra can do with these graphics. So the benchmark ran at an average rate of 94 frames per second on the M1 Max and an average rate of 102 frames per second on the M1 Ultra. The scores weren't too far apart with the M1 Max scoring a 2371 and the M1 Ultra scoring a 2584. If you look at the maximum frames per second on each of them, they were both just around 187. Now those are all benchmarks, but what does that actually mean in terms of a real world application? In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and export a video inside of Final Cut. So I have a 4K video, 30 frames per second, that is an hour long, and I exported it on both machines just to 4K. And it took 18 minutes and 13 seconds on the M1 Max from Final Cut, and the M1 Ultra took a very similar 18 minutes and 22. Basically, again, within that margin of error. There wasn't much of a difference in that long file. Now that first export was just the Apple compatible 4K video file. So if I exported a full file from Final Cut Pro with the file being in ProRes, a 16 minute video took a minute and 14 seconds on the M1 Ultra, which definitely was better than the minute and 30 seconds on the M1 Max. When you extrapolate that out to a much longer video or more complicated video, you can see how the M1 Ultra and its multiple video and code and decode engine is able to help out on those high-end video exports, let alone if you're looking at an 8K file or something even more complicated. Lastly, I want to round this out with the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test. I got a 46.29 megabits per second write and a 51.80 on the read. But on the M1 Ultra, I got a 5163 write and a 5226 read. The difference here being is the M1 Ultra has the larger SSD on the inside as well. So as the size gets up there, it is a faster SSD module than the smaller sizes. So keep that in mind when ordering. So that is it. That is the difference between the M1 Max version of the Mac Studio and the M1 Ultra version. There's a $2,000 price difference, but you can see the difference in terms of performance just in these simple benchmarks that I performed here just on launch day. And you get the additional benefits of starting out with more base configuration options and higher end configurations options should you choose to go there for things like the memory. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. Do you think the M1 Ultra version is a good deal for those who need that much power? Let me know in the comments or on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. Otherwise, stay tuned. We got a whole bunch more videos heading your way.